Hello and welcome to another Cloud Podcast, a podcast designed to bring you stories from the smartest minds in IT, operations, and business, and learn how they're using cloud technology to improve business and the customer experience. All right, well, welcome to another Cloud Podcast. We are here today with a, an executive that we are looking forward to talking to. It's been a while, but we're glad to have someone from Zoom here. We've got Josh Stanley. He is the sales strategist for Zoom's contact center. So Josh, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. I think you give me too much credit, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not quite an executive, but I do lead sales strategy for the contact center. So a lot of the things I do on a day in day out basis is, is working through gaps or problems around process, people, product, whatever that may be, and kind of working with the different groups to help solve those. Absolutely. And we're looking forward to hearing more about just your background and how you got into, you know, got in with Zoom and your contact center experience. But I don't want to forget about Artie. Artie, welcome to the show again, my co-host and partner in crime. Yeah, Alex, thanks for having me on as co-host today. And Josh, nice to, to see you again. I know we did a pre-call, but um, Alex and I are extremely excited to hear a little bit about what Zoom's doing in the contact center space. And we heard you're the right person to talk to. But uh, before we get there, to piggyback off of what Alex just said, give us a little background of who you are, you know, what your origin story is and how you got it to where you are today. Yeah, very good. Um, so I, I, my role, as I mentioned already, is I, I lead sales strategy. So I'm tasked with kind of addressing a lot of the gaps in, in our go-to-market strategy, product, people, process, et cetera. Um, I've been here at Zoom now for three years, started originally on the Zoom phone team, helped build that out. We announced last September uh, that we have now over 2 million seats sold. In fact, in February at our fourth quarter earnings release, we announced in the fourth quarter that we sold 550,000 seats of Zoom phone. So mm -hmm. a, a run rate uh, based on you know 550,000 seats is a lot of seats uh, sold per year. Um, so very, very happy with the progress there. And of course, we've now expanded in February, launched the contact center. And that's where I've taken over that role to, to build out and, and, and help find the same sec success in, in the contact center space. Uh, prior to joining Zoom, I spent uh, 10 years at, at a competitor um, and uh, helped both in the, in the partner side for a few years, on the direct sales side for a few years, and then uh, the, the, the partner channels uh, uh, sales side uh, as well for a number of years as well selling the collaboration suite. Um, what's unique, I guess, in, in my space is, is I transitioned uh, uh, from the financial services world. So I spent the first 10 years of my career uh, at Merrill Lynch uh, actually running a call center. So I did every role that you could imagine a contact center starting from uh, an agent on the phone, inbound, mostly sales organization into um, leading and, and, and driving uh, the entire uh, Jacksonville facility here in, uh, in Florida. So um, bringing that a lot of that sort of business knowledge and the background that I spent trying to find operational efficiency and, and better productivity uh, through that, uh, through that call center into the role today. Yeah, nice. that's, that's a great background. And I have to be honest, you know, with, with when, it was Zoom, when it was Zoom video and there wasn't a voice, you know, with the phones and there wasn't contact center, I was like, man, how can we get our hands on being able to sell Zoom video? And it wasn't, you guys weren't in the channel yet. And then we kept hearing rumblings like, oh, they're going to come out with Zoom voice. I'm like, really? Zoom voice? Like, there's no way it's going to take off that fast. There's no way. Like, Ring Central's been there forever, all these big players. And all of a sudden, you guys come to the market, and this is your, your sales strategy, and just blow it out of the water. And now it's like one of our leading you know, voice platforms that we sell to our clients. It's proven to be reliable, has the functionality that you know a phone system needs. And then I was like, well... The next step is obvious, right? It's it's contact centers. Just continuing to build that portfolio out. Talk a little bit about just this, you know, the maybe just challenges as a biz, as a business leader of taking a product to market like that, and what you learned and what you're gonna, what you will take from the phone portion of your strategy to the contact center to get it out into the world. Yeah, it's a good question. And in fact, actually, I think you can even take a step further back and you think about what was going to market and taking a new product like Zoom meetings to market a decade ago. And the reality is it turns out customers like Simple, right? Like they, they'd like to be able to eliminate unnecessary friction in the process of using, deploying, buying, 
managing right the whole nine yards of mm -hmm. of a product life cycle uh, for customers. So the friction is not good in any aspect, right? And ideally, it's 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 tolerated in certain areas because there was really no better choice. And I think the reason that Zoom, from a video perspective, blossoms so fast is that uh, our CEO Eric Yuan targeted friction in the process. Again, the understanding the 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 uh, purchasing the deployment the management right and in really did uh, a very central focus on trying to eliminate that friction and he did that through uh advocating for customer um in in in, in, in request so making sure that we really dug deep into understanding what customers were asking for in the process so um that transitioned in the phone very, very well, of course, because customers love to eliminate the friction in the process. And, mm -hmm. and if they'd already deployed meetings, simply adding an icon at the top of the app that they were already using and enjoying quite a bit mm -hmm. um, was a win-win across the business. It made it easier for users. It made it easier for administrators. It made it easier for finance, for IT, along the entire stack. It just made it easier uh, to consume and uh, deploy and use and get support from a single vendor, especially when that vendor was able to to make the the expectation, the output actually mm -hmm. that much more predictable as well. Uh, you, you take that into the contact center, and although it is very different than than phone, a lot of consistencies are in those uh, buying patterns, right? Uh, it, it is a very complex technology. There's, I mean, the PBX is very complex in many ways. The contact center is complex in many ways. Um, but comparatively, so if you can simplify it in any way, it's going to be appealing as long as it can deliver on that base set of, of requirements. And I think that's what we're carrying into the contact center. We're looking for ways um, to bring simplicity in terms of the contact center uh, that we haven't seen, quite frankly, uh, mm -hmm. with other vendors. In most cases, there are exceptions out there that really do focus on this as well. Um, but balancing that with a rich, robust, capable solution that delivers a quality engagement for the customer. So that's those are our, our focus points. And, and again, it's not going to be overnight. It's going to take time to get to that point. Um, but we believe that we have a very solid product even today, a core set of features uh, that will only expand over time and open up the funnel even further to more and more customers to consider this product as a, a viable option for them, especially if they're already using Zoom meetings and Zoom phone, because it just simply adds many more additional hooks and, and very simple ways to be able to uh, to integrate the rest of the stack. Yeah. yeah and you answered this a little bit, but I'm gonna zo zoom into it, no pun intended, uh, a little bit more. <laughs> um, so tell us uh, why Contact Center is such a heavy focus and you guys have a, a product out today, Zoom Contact Center. Um, why was it a major focus? You guys had you know, been the leader in the market with meetings once uh, the pandemic hit and we all had to, mm -hmm. you know, migrate to that both on the personal side and also on the, the business side. And then you released Zoom phone, um, which was the, the next step, the next evolution. And now we're kind of talking about contact center where, uh, as, as you just mentioned, there's a lot of complexity with contact center. Um, a contact center that's huge or enterprise level may need a different uh, list of requirements than one that's a lot smaller or maybe, you know, industry specific um, uniquenesses. But I think we all understand the concept of, oh, it would be great if we already have Zoom meetings and already have Zoom phone, if we could just have another piece of that, that tool set and framework mm -hmm. to, you know, have a external facing uh, conversation with a customer. Um, so tell us a little bit about why why contact center and you now has it been an easy journey, a hard journey? Like where are you guys now in the evolution of the new new product set? Yeah, um, good, good question as well. So I I, I think that um, this this answer will hold true for not only everything we've built up to this point, but everything that we will build uh, in the future. And that's it stems from customer feedback, right? So. A lot of people don't know this, but Zoom meetings was created by customer feedback. It was when Eric was at a competitor, uh, and you can look that up to see where he was before. <laughs> but um, he, he he listened to what customers were saying, and they were giving him very actionable, very specific guidance on how they can improve the product at the time. The reality is, is it was tough to get that type of change, con uh, you know, instituted. 
uh, there. So ultimately he transitioned, built Zoom, and we know, you know how that went. Uh, and it was, the feedback was to standardize on a single core architecture, right? Instead of simply just buying and plugging in additional functionality to be able to scale fast uh, and and deep to all your customers wasn't really the best way to deliver a, a, a complete solution set that was easy uh, for users and administrators. So ultimately, uh, Eric was targeting a way to be able to kind of rebuild and really think about the future uh, with that next gen, truly uh, cloud built uh, scalable architecture. And, and ultimately that's what he built with Zoom. So that feedback came in with Zoom uh, meetings and then ultimately the same feedback came in. You solved a lot of the pain that we had with desktop meetings, conference room meetings. Um, you made that easier. It just worked more consistent, cleaner, mm -hmm. simpler, right? And we built um, the most difficult traffic running over the network first with video, right? It's very challenging to build not only a point-to-point -point video engagement, but a multi-point video engagement in very, very uh, inconsistent uh, uh, connections, right? So that challenge was really significant right out of the gate. Simply adding uh, the PBX became a little bit like functionality conversations and stripping it down and focusing on a point-to-point -point audio call. So when you start thinking about the impact uh, to the architecture, it was actually far more simple than building a, a, a very, very advanced uh, mm. a video, multi-point video solution. So ultimately, it just took us time to build out the uh, functionality for Zoom Phone to get to that point. So ultimately, mm. uh, make it easier, make it simpler, make it like buying one, bring it all into one application, bring it into one core um, architecture so that I can manage it all from one place. And it just worked, right? And that was, of course, where, where that, that stemmed from. We got the same feedback from customers around the contact center is, you know, I've got multiple vendors for multiple pieces. Um, mm -hmm. Look for me to, to be able to connect with my customers and eliminate the technology out of the way. Just build a connection in a more personalized way. And that's why one of the things we started with was not only traditional core in, the, in, a, in a contact center is, is voice, of course, but we started as well with a video channel um, out of the gates uh, when we launched the product in February as well. Mm -hmm. So a big reason why we went this direction was because of customer demand and, and customer feedback uh, and the ability to be able to tie the PBX and the contact center solution better together. Yeah. Um, and then the other piece of it is, is there is clearly a shift that's happening in the way organizations interact with their customers. And that shift, even before the pandemic, uh, uh, is to, towards video and how do they engage remotely? And of course, the pandemic just put put that on, on high octane in terms of mm -hmm. the transition. All of a sudden opened the doors to consider things that we never thought were possible, that not only were possible, but we were doing them. Now, granted in very inefficient, maybe ineffective ways, mm -hmm. but we were doing them and that shift was out of necessity, right? Which is the mother of all invention. So um, yeah. ultimately it just opened the doors to, to consider more things. And now that, that door is just even, even wider, almost blown off, right? In terms of customers coming to us, rethinking the way they interact with their customers, not just in the traditional format of a customer needing support and they call into a contact center. We're not suggesting that, that organizations video enable their traditional support, sure. like tech support, it may be. Uh, what we're saying is now the definition of an agent sometimes might be massaged over the next couple of decades, mm -hmm. right? As we look at creative and new ways to engage in the pre-sales process, as well as the post-sales process with our customers to be able to strengthen the relationship we have with them, uh, automate more, but yet at the same time, when we automate, we can now provide those richer experiences to be even better for those that we don't automate with, right? So a lot of talk around automation and, and uh, machine learning and, and, and eliminating engagements with customers through that process of outsourcing them to some sort of automation. But the reality is that means the ones that stay are the most challenging, the most complex. It's the ones we're going to need to get the most amount of information from our customer in order to be able to solve those needs. Uh, and, and video is the right way to do that when you're, when you're doing it in a virtual environment. Yeah. 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 It, you know, a couple of things came to mind as you're, you know, going through, through all the, you know, that, that, that piece. And one of it's just with Eric and, the, and the, the timing of it all, right. When he first created zoom, I'd say bandwidth was just coming out of the T1 days and more into fibers becoming more accessible and more affordable coax, you know, and 
broadband shared shared services, coax and like FiOS or you know shared fiber services like that became or were becoming more popular, which allowed the video to flourish. And then what's interesting is you know, and I like because there aren't many providers that have built everything from scratch from the beginning right or have built everything from scratch that can just bolt on the phone or bolt on the contact center we see these legacy pbx you know companies are just they're just dying on the vine like avaya is selling off to ring and you have mytel buying shortel and then mytel is just you know kind of dying on the vine and partnering with you know others as well and i think the advantage and what i like to, what i like about zoom is that it's all homegrown you saw the need you brought the phone homegrown you saw the need for contact center and you're bringing that in now and it's all homegrown you're not just looking to go out and acquire companies and trying to patch it together and that's usually what the the mo has been in the contact center world you have these big gartner right quadrant companies that's like well shoot we have a an aging architecture in the data center let's go buy another company that's already in the cloud or in the aws and create it or let's go buy this widget here and that widget there and like you kind of just clunkily piecing it all together. And I think, you know, the, the strategy that you guys are taking is perfect, which is just build everything from the ground up. It might not be as fast to market, but it'll be better to market at the end of the day. Yeah. You, there's a reason why they don't do it, right? It's, it's hard. Yeah. Um, you know, it is much faster uh, and much easier um, to partner and, and to acquire, right? And the reality is, but it's only easier in your own lens, when you take a step back and you look at the solution through your customer's lens, right? Um, speed to them doesn't matter. It, it comes down to the experience that, they, that they're looking for. Obviously, quick wins and fast wins to be able to plug in solutions uh, to expand out your product set um, is, is not a bad strategy. It certainly can be, can be used to, to not only other competitor advantages, mm-hmm. but our advantage as well. Um, but the reality is I think the core if we're talking about the core, which is what really you're, you're, you're really getting into is, is, is the routing piece of it, right? The recording, the reporting, like the, these are core components of the contact center. And if you build those, ultimately any ancillary connections that you add on to customize the experience for a particular customer needs can, can, can run a lot, lot more as planned, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're if you're taking a lot of the core and plugging and playing multiple solutions together, either through partnerships or acquisitions, and then we're taking those acquisitions and tie them and then to other acquisitions, and they're all running by definition on different structs, you know, architecture. Yep. And that's where, and I, I refer a lot of time in our space when I talk to customers about collaboration islands. Um, when you acquire like that and you just buy pieces, you you're building all of these unique islands out there that are very purpose built for a specific purpose, right? They're, they're point products solving a specific need to plug and play into that, that, that full solution. The challenge is anytime I do that by definition, in order for me to connect those, I'm building a bridge between those islands. And and it's a visual that I think most people can understand because I have two islands connected with Mm -hmm. a bridge, which works fine. I can only traverse those two islands in the bridge that was purpose built to do it. And it works okay. But the minute I upgrade one of those bridges, right? N- not in the physical form, but in the virtual software form, is mm-hmm. the minute I upgrade one of those, those, those islands, I break the bridge, right? Unless I'm considering that on both sides. And it's why that's friction that people feel, right? When they go yeah. to use something as intended and they get a result that was not expected. And generally speaking, it's because something on the back end broke due to some sort of uh, upgrade that happened or didn't happen that should have happened. And as a result, somebody's going in there yep. probably late night over the weekend, fixing that code, making a patch. <laughs> and then now that bridge is traversable again. And well, let's the impact that business while they couldn't traverse over that. It's enormous, especially if you're talking about the contact center. So when we're talking to customers now, we're talking to customers that say, you know, get rid of the bridge, right? Like figure out a way to be able to make this just work, right? When the way we want, when we want it uh, and, and have less surprises in the process. And I think yeah. the value comes to your point exactly is our decision to natively build rather than partner or, um, or to acquire. Now we, we yeah. flirted with both of those. In fact, actually for the past couple of years, we, we've partnered with five leading contact center 
as a service partners. And we very, very are still much committed to that strategy because we want to provide customer choice. We want to make it very easy mm-hmm. for that customer um, for their use case, their need to provide a solution uh, that delivers on that need. And sometimes that can be all Zoom for their communication needs, including the contact center. But sometimes it's not. We get that, right? There are specific use cases that we can't satisfy today. In those cases, we want to build a better together solution that does not have a requirement for the customer or the other vendor to build a purpose-built bridge, but something that's already pre-established, that's predictable, mm-hmm. and we can ensure that the experience is what the customer is expecting. That's great. Nice. Yeah, I want to drill it into that a little bit more. Um, so you've got Zoom Contact Center, and you've got these strong relationships with some of those Gardner Magic Quadrant Contact Center uh, providers today. And it sounds like you're going to continue to have that ongoing relationship so that you can fill the gap if there is a gap with um, with one of those providers. So let's let's drill into it. Let's talk a little bit about what are the channels that you can use Zoom Contact Center across to help support your customers today? We know we know video, uh, we know uh, the voice channel, but what about any of the digital channels? And you know what's what's on the roadmap in the future? Are you going to expand all channels or as many channels as possible, or is the primary focus to just stay uh, video, phone, and and whatever some uh, core channels are today out there today? Yeah, I would say um, at GA, when we launched this in February, uh, we launched with voice and video. Um, and, and again, voice kind of checks the box of a, of a core solution. And of course, as you get into defining yourself as an omni-channel provider, it's much more than just voice, right? So we launched video because why would we not go into the contact center <laughs> with video? It's core what we do. Uh, and it, there's certainly enhancements, and we're going to continue to round that out, and make it even more usable for our customers. But it is a pro- product of uh, a core product of of the solution set. And it would have been quite odd, actually, if we launched a voice only uh, Zoom contact center. Yeah. So, um, with that being said, we do also now in customer beta have the option for customers to test both SMS as well as web chat. Um, so okay. um, the ability to be able to now have four different channels, unique channels coming into an omni-channel experience, uh, one agent desktop. And what's great about our desktop, it's not only an agent desktop, but it's also a back office desktop as well. So mm-hmm. if you're using Zoom for chat or meetings or phone, it's the same application. It's all just based on credentials. You log in as an agent, you're going to get an agent view in addition to chat and meetings and phone if you have those resources on your account as well. If I log in as a supervisor, same application, I'm just coming in and I'm getting a different view based on uh, 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 credentials of what's assigned to me. Uh, And then ultimately, um, you know, we do want to continue to build out, to answer your question, we want to continue to build out the product set to provide those core set of features. And the logical ones, although I'm not talking roadmap, the logical ones extend out past that the core four would get into things like email and social. That's those are mm-hmm. you know future futuristic. Um, I don't suspect they're coming overnight. Those are are larger um, larger to tackle. Um, and then I think it's also important to understand too. Um, we know where we are. We know where we play in this space today. Where we have strengths, uh, and we know where our partnerships provide incremental strengths for us to still earn and win that meetings and phone business. So it's very very important for us. So. I don't think people realize too, we've been offering very light contact center functionality for quite some time, in fact. So mm-hmm. if you look at Zoom phone by itself, whether you're talking about call queues, whether you're talking about uh, a, a simple auto attendant with an IVR, right? Call recording, right? These automatic call recording even, right? I can do all of those things with Zoom phone. And then we added what's called a power pack. The power pack license is an incremental license you can assign to what you would define as a power user. Power user is generally mm-hmm. going to be users that need more advanced functionality. One of those functions is live reporting. So you start getting into like an internal help desk, right? And all of a sudden I need, now need live reporting. Um, another channel came into PowerPack. We offer team SMS that allows a customer to text a queue and have multiple members of that mm-hmm. queue to be able to respond to that text. Things like a receptionist console for high volume where I can kind of very simply navigate inbound calls through, through the system, right? Uh, in a more manual fashion. So that was sort of kind of the the the, the birth of, of the contact center. So we've been having 
those mm-hmm. types of conversations for the better part of a year plus now in the in in the power pack. And now we're just expanding that conversation, right? We're taking what is an incremental ad of the power pack and now layering on conversations like skills-based routing and call flow editors and, and mm-hmm. basic scripting and, and you know, those types of things that take the conversation a little bit further. But in reality is Zoom Contact Center is still very much a, a, a solution that sits in between our basic Zoom phone and power pack solution and our a partner-led advanced contact center, you know, very, very robust omni-channel needs, right? We know where the strength is. Those strengths are typically uh, in, in less complex needs or in uh, non-traditional agent use cases. Yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned that and it's, it's top of mind for me because we actually had a client, we did a demo late last week and I saw the power pack, the, you know, the reporting that it had, and the, and the simplicity of the platform, like in the back end, right? The admin portion and the client and the, the sales engineer were talking about how like, it looks so simple. Like, is it missing something, right? Capability wise, he's like, no, it's, it's all there, but it's just laid out so, you know, simply and easy to use. It's almost like they're not used to having a, a solution or a system that can be done in such a, like a, you know, just in a way where you just know where the buttons are, right? It's like using your iPhone. Um, yeah, there's, but, there's, a, there's nothing easy about designing software that's simple, right? Like it, right. There's a, an immense amount of work that goes into thinking about the user experience and what, mm-hmm. what, what, what things should uh, look like and how they work together uh, in a logical way. That there's, it, 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 again, to your point is, is, yeah. is it takes time to develop some of these things, but it takes time to package them in a way that they actually get great adoption and usability yeah. out of it, as opposed to just making it available. Right. Yeah. And you, and you touched, you know, and even a second ago, you touched on, you know, how building everything, you know, call it vertically, you know, vertically, right. With all the different platforms, but having the ability to, to bolt on the certain things that won't fit or that you don't have currently. Mm-hmm. And we have clients that, you know, they're, if they go with one of the big called the big two that are in the quadrant, well, they have to go with their WFM. They can't bolt on another one, right? Or, you know, so it's not, sometimes it's nice to have that ability, that flexibility to bring in another solution because maybe they like this WFM better than this company's offering and things like that. So I think having that, those partnerships, those collaborations that you have is important. Yeah. And there's also another huge advantage. Um, uh, you know, if you again, if you think about it from a customer's perspective, of course, as a vendor, I'd rather you lift and shift your entire solution stack to me, right? I, I want to own it all. I believe I can provide the best experience for you. But in reality is if I'm migrating off of a, a legacy on-prem solution, um, fill in the blank, right? There's no shortage of them. Uh, and I've over a decade or two have built the solution that works for me. And maybe I've layered on things like, uh, Calabrio for, you know, mm-hmm. recording in AQM and maybe I'm using something else for, so I've attached all of these sort of add-on products to round out and complete the solution. And for whatever reason, I chose that vendor and it's working for me in, in mm-hmm. some cases, maybe it's not in others. It becomes quite a bit easier from the customer's lens to migrate from a premises-based solution or another uh, vendor solution, even in the cloud to another vendor solution. If all I'm talking about is the core and I can keep, mm-hmm. you know, in this case, maybe mm-hmm. Calabria or Variant for WFM. Like I can keep those pieces that I like. It's certainly not something I need to solve. It's not a problem that I need to solve for today. It gives an incremental value to the customer in that migration talk track, right? It is much easier for them to consume. Now, it's still a, a big lift. I'm not naive yeah. uh, to lift and shift the core of the contact center, but it does make it easier if I can keep some of those ancillary yeah. add-on products, right? But we're very, very interested in giving customer choice, right? So yeah. if if you do want to keep it, we want to be able to support that type of an integration. And if we're going to be looking at all the traditional con- uh, vendors in place to be able to have those integrations mm-hmm. that work for customers. Uh, but in the event where you want to begin to streamline and simplify and reduce vendors, reduce mm-hmm. the headaches that's involved with support across multiple different vendors, um, we want to provide that uh, as an option as well uh, to customers. So we want to deliver that customer choice. Yeah, that's great. Well, Josh, uh, we're running a little short on time. So I've only got one more question for you before we wrap it up. Um, So with Zoom Contact Center, who is your ideal customer or audience? You know, does it, is it vertical specific? Is it a customer that's a current 
Zoom customer and they kind of need to migrate into this new, or is it could it be someone completely who's never used Zoom before, doesn't have a license for their, their company or organization, and they can start and hit the ground running with Zoom Contact Center? Yeah, so we obviously we want to talk to both of those customers. Um, the reality is they can buy Zoom Contact Center without the rest of the suite, at least not the bulk of it, right? So you don't have to have Zoom phone to, to, to deploy yeah. out Zoom Contact Center. The reality is by design, because it's that single core architecture, they can work better together. We believe we can provide a better solution. It's just a bigger, it's a bigger replacement to talk PBX and Contact Center replacement at the same time. So generally we're talking about one first, and that means a customer who's using Zoom meetings is adding on Zoom phone. A Zoom phone customers adding on Zoom contact center, uh, or they're going straight from meetings uh, to contact center. I would say the type of customer we're looking for um, at this stage, again, if you ask me this in six months, it's probably quite a bit different answer because of development on the product. But at this stage, we're looking for customers that have very unique uh, use cases that maybe are not traditional agents, that they're trying to find ways to better in a more personal way connect with their customers. And that's typically over video. Being able to shorten the sales cycle by having an interested customer on your website click a button and route to an agent earlier in this process on video where they can share out their screen, demo a product, answer questions, and connect in a way that now that, that customer is not starting at stage zero of your sales process. They're starting at stage two or three or four, right? So anytime mm -hmm. you want to connect better with customers in a more efficient, more effective way and provide reporting on it. We've got a great solution uh, through the use of video and Zoom Contact Center. And then the other side of that, if you're thinking about you know, replacing a contact center, we're looking for customers that recognizably have a fairly basic or less complex need today, and they want to grow over time, but they mm -hmm. want to simplify, right? So it's that customer that has uh, probably less agents, but it doesn't necessarily always uh, um, jive with the number of agents. I've seen some of the most complex contact centers I've ever seen have less than 50 agents. I've seen some of the most simplified contact centers I've ever seen that have hundreds of agents. So it comes down to what are you asking the system to do for you? If it's mm -hmm. basic traditional voice channel, we can support it. If you're looking to scale into other digital channels, we can support it. If you're looking to change your experience and really transform and connect with your customer through video, we can support it. And so I think, I think we give customers an opportunity to sort of future proof as their business change, we're going to be right there changing with them. Yeah. That's great. You know, we're looking forward to selling it and to advising our clients on finding the right fit and, you know, bringing, bringing Zoom and the whole portfolio to a lot of our clients, you know, during, during the process of our, of our consulting. So Josh, we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, we love Zoom. It's a great product. We've, we've done the meetings. We're on one right now that we use for the podcast. We do it for phones and everything. So we appreciate you coming on and Love to have uh, have you on again, and as as things progress, and as you add more tools to the tool chest, love to have you on and show, talk about those as well. I love hearing that. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Absolutely, Artie, yeah, thanks, as always, buddy. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Alex, for co-hosting. Uh, thanks, Josh, for being on. Absolute pleasure having you on, and thank you everyone for listening. And uh, you know, subscribe to our YouTube or Spotify podcast. That'll wrap it up for another episode. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, that wraps up the show for today. Thanks for joining. And don't forget to join us next week as we bring another guest in to talk about the trends around cloud contact center and customer experience. Also, you can find us at AdlerAdvisors.com, LinkedIn, or your favorite podcast platform. We'll see you next week on another cloud podcast. <laughs>